the most amazing place in the world. Look at what she just did. Oh my God. I was about to have a like a tissy fit. I was about to bitch about eye creams being overpriced moisturizers. But do you see what she just did? Phoebe Denover or Denover has a skincare routine that just got posted on Vogue and we are going to react. She is from Bridgerton and the same person who produced Grey's Anatomy produced Bridgerton. I have not watched it. I don't know if it's out yet. I don't know a lot of TV, but it's one of my goals to learn new things. And we're very excited to see what she puts on her dry skin. And for those who don't know, I have oily skin, but I've been having weird kidney vitamin D hormone things. So I have patches of dryness now and I am your resident medical esthetician, acne big sister, coffee connoisseur and skincare nerd. So today we're going to nerd out. Hi Vogue, I'm Phoebe Denver and I'm gonna walk you through my skincare routine and a casual makeup look. So first step before I do anything, I'm gonna tie back my hair cause I don't want it to get in the way. I actually don't wash my face in the morning unless I'm working out and then of course I will wash my face afterwards but usually I just splash cold water on my face and pat it dry. Oh my god, it's Dinova. Dinova? Dinova. I love that she ties her hair back. Nothing's getting in the way. She also doesn't wash her face. I don't always wash my face with a cleanser in the morning. I do exactly what she does. I splash a little water. That doesn't mean it's going to be right for everyone. One of our favorite dermatologists on YouTube, Dr. Dre, agrees. Washing your face in the morning is not essential. And for me, my skincare routine is so great at night. There's so many steps that I love and things that actually work on my skin. It's not overwhelming. It's just effective that I don't have to wash that off in the morning. I do a little bit of a splash, but unless you are sweating at night, unless you're struggling with some sort of a skin condition, you don't have to. And for some people, it's a good idea not to. She does say, or Vogue says that she has dry skin. And for some people who have dry skin, it's better to use an oil or something like that at night and to actually not overly wash your face in the morning. I love this for her. I do want to know what's in her nighttime skincare routine, but I don't know. Maybe she'll tell us in the near future. She also looks like... She looks like someone I've seen before. Isn't Bridgerton the name of that alarm clock that's also a coffee machine? You know that alarm clock that wakes you up but makes you a cup of coffee? It was a Kickstarter. Do you know what I'm talking about? Isn't that called the Bridgerton? A Brigaden? Bergamont? Burgundy? What is that called? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It is literally a coffee machine attached to an alarm clock and apparently it like wakes you up in the morning for coffee. It's like $500 or $600. It's stupid money. And if I had stupid people money, that's actually what I would spend it on. I wouldn't buy a $500 pot of La Mer that gets used up in 30 days. No, 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 no. I would buy the stupid coffee alarm clock, then I wouldn't have to make my own coffee anymore. My alarm clock would make it for me. Isn't that Bridgerton though? Oh, the Broussier Bar Sewer. Oh, it's $500. <laughs> Isn't that the most beautiful little coffee alarm clock though? Look at her. Bar Sewer. The Bar Sewer. Dyslexia is hitting hard today, but. Okay, I guess a Bridgerton is a different thing. I think they should make a coffee called a Bridgerton, but that's just my opinion. Afterwards, but usually I just splash cold water on my face and pat it dry. After the cold water would be um, vitamin C, which I'm obsessed with, CEO, brightening serum. This is from Sunday Riley, and this is one of the vitamin C products. It's the CEO vitamin C line as a whole that freaked my skin out. Before we found out about Sunday Riley and the Sephora scandal, which by the way, if you don't know about Sunday Riley and the Sephora scandal, I would highly recommend go checking out that video. I tried these products. I tried the CEO oil and the CEO um, cream. Both of them broke me out horribly. For some people, I think they ended up like spoiling or turning yellow. I'm glad that she likes this. I would personally not recommend this vitamin C. It is cruelty free. It is vegan. Sunday Riley as a whole is. They're just not a brand that I choose to support at this time for reasons as mentioned in that video. But this is an $85 vitamin C serum. It's so expensive. It's tetrahexadecal ascorbate, which is a very good form of vitamin C. But there are other vitamin Cs that have this form of vitamin C that work very well and actually have a light sealed container, whereas this one's just clear 
clear glass. This one doesn't. This does have beeswax as well. So sorry, it's not vegan. I totally thought it was. Ooh, that's not good. Hydrogenated polydecane. We do have jojoba esters. We have sweet orange oil. I'm a little bit more sensitive to citrus. Not everybody is. And maybe that's why this broke me out. I just don't recommend this and it's really expensive for what it is. If you are looking for a tetrahexyl decal ascorbate that's really good and not like $85, The Ordinary has one that's like 10 bucks. I would highly recommend this. It works really, really well. And one of the main benefits of using vitamin C in the morning is that it can boost up your sunscreen. If you wanna take that a step further and actually get a sunscreen that has this form of vitamin C in it, there's one from Medicate, M-E-D-I-K-8. They are one of the best brands. They are so good, they're a little bit more expensive, but this actually combines a sunscreen with this tetrahexyl decal ascorbate together, and it's like the best of both worlds. The vitamin C, potential collagen boosting, brightening, anti-hyperpigmentation, antioxidant boost, along with the sunscreen to prevent from the fine lines, the wrinkles, preventing the hyperpigmentation, preventing the collagen from breaking down. I absolutely love it. It's the Radiant Vitamin C SPF 30. It is so good. It comes in this little pot and I would 10 out of 10 highly recommend over the Sunday Riley one. And even the more expensive one is $50, not 85. <laughs> She likes saving money, okay? If she has Bridgerton brassy bar sewer coffee alarm clock kind of money, she still wouldn't spend it on Sunday Riley. She would still spend it on the ordinary and then maybe the coffee alarm clock. <laughs> she speaks in the third person when she's highly caffeinated. When I was growing up, I had kind of mostly dry skin. So I just kind of started layering on. I think I was, when I was like 14, I would use Vaseline and just like put it everywhere. I know, that sounds insane. And then I learned like a proper skincare routine. Let's challenge that. Vaseline is not cruelty free and vegan, uh, but the main ingredient, petrolatum or petroleum jelly is. And this petroleum jelly, the one that I get is like from CVS or Salimo, it's actually really good for people who have really dry skin. For people who have eczema or psoriasis, Solimo jelly or this Vaseline type formula is actually recommended to a lot of people, especially if you get cuts or fissures on the skin. And dermatologists recommend it because it does work. I know that for some people they're like, oh, it's so cheap or like it's a, you know, oil byproduct. Ooh. The general population who aren't subscribed to skin intellectuals like have this preconceived notion about it. And dude, when I first started in aesthetics in 2009, I thought the same thing. I was like, Bleh. absolutely no. But honestly, for some people, it's a lifesaver. It's inexpensive. It's fragrance free. It does the job. If you use a hydrator like this vitamin C, it actually helps to seal it in. And for someone who's got dry, cracked skin or eczema and psoriasis, it can help really, really well. For someone who's oily, you wouldn't want to use it. And for someone who, you know, struggles with breakouts and things, it might not be the best. For me, we have to try slugging. We have a video. If you subscribed, then you'll know when it comes out. We're going to have to discuss that for different skin types because obviously it is a thick cream and it does not work the same for everyone. So she liked it back then I would encourage her to try it again now but I do want to see what else is in her routine because it sounds like she's got something that she likes. After vitamin C I would usually probably do a little eye cream again back with Sunday Riley. I've been obsessed with this brand ever since I first spent time in New York and my apartment was right next to Sephora which is really dangerous for anyone but it's especially dangerous for a Brit because to a Brit Sephora is like, like the most amazing place in the world. Look at what she just did. Oh my God. I was about to have a like a tissy fit. I was about to bitch about eye creams being overpriced moisturizers. But do you see what she just did? She just put the eye cream here and here and here. This is what I love to see. This makes me so happy. Most eye creams can be used all over the face, but for the amount that you have to pay for such a small amount, it doesn't always make sense. This is amazing. And if she likes the eye cream genuinely for the ingredients, put it all over the face. And if you're trying to save money, if you're on a budget and you're like, oh my God, these eye creams are so expensive and I haven't seen results from a lot of them. What am I doing wrong? It's not you. It's the industry. Take your best working facial cream and you can use it in the eye area. Don't get it in the conjunctiva, but you can use it around the eyes because that's what most eye creams are. Oh my God, this makes me so happy. It looks like she's using the autocorrect brightening and depuffing eye contour cream. I know that Sunday Riley has another eye cream that took off on 
on TikTok, which fun fact, we tested on one eye and not the other, and your bitch just hasn't posted it yet. She needs to get on top of her production schedule. She's got amazing people that she works with to help with her production schedule, and she's talking in the third person again because she's highly caffeinated, but she needs some help with the production schedule, just the time management. But hey, advice from a therapist, you cannot manage time. You can only manage yourself in respect to time. But when that's the challenge, then you're still kind of screwed. Let's check out the ingredients, why don't we? Uh, this looks interesting. First ingredient, water. Second ingredient, beeswax. Beeswax is basically the bee version of petrolatum jelly. Just use Vaseline or petrolatum jelly. You do have some caprol caprolate, you do have some dimethicone, glycerin, smoothie kind of stuff. Again, all very good, but you would literally find all of this in a facial moisturizer. We have some jojoba esters, which I love. As we know, jojoba oil mimics what our skin creates naturally, so it's really good for people who are dry. We do have some polysilicone 11. Caffeine, which is good, okay? We love some caffeine. Can help with a little bit of darkness, not from pigmentation, but from blood or fluid that might pull up under the eye. Some glycol acid, but then we have mica and more beeswax. And again, mica, that's what's in makeup. It's the shimmery, shiny rock shit. So when you put this on, you're like, oh my God, my under eyes are so bright. And it's like, yeah, you just applied makeup that's put in a tube of eye cream. There are some extracts. Again, the ingredients aren't terrible. There's fragrance in here. Ooh, fragrance up by the eye area could be dangerous for people who are sensitive. I'm just, mm, no. There are eye creams. If you're like dead set on purchasing an eye cream, here are some that I would recommend. But Honestly, although these are good, use these facial moisturizers. These are some of my favorite facial moisturizers that I use as eye creams. And look at how much more you get for $30, $50 versus these tiny little tubes. If you really want something brightening, Dr. Sandra Lee MD has the uh, retinol eye cream. Whew, amazing. And then Pacifica also has their really nice vegan ceramide eye cream if you do have more dry skin or if you want something more moist. But again, Pacifica also has the vegan ceramide moisturizer and I would just use that as an eye cream. This eye cream does not get the cast pass, but you know what? The way she's applying it and just her personality in general absolutely does. And her nails, like weird compliment. She has such pretty nails. Are they natural? Are they not? I don't know. I would like one order of whatever that is, please. Moisturizer. <laughs> this is key to someone like me who has really dry skin. The ice moisturizer. Um, so I'm just gonna put that everywhere as well. I like that she likes it. Is she sponsored by Sunday Riley or does she just love Sunday Riley? Apparently she loves this and she says that this is the key to dry skin, but um, don't know the other details. Let's take a look at the ingredientes and see if they would be great for dry skin. Just because it works for her, it doesn't mean it's going to work for others. Just because something works for one person or just because one person on the internet doesn't like something doesn't mean that you don't have to like it either. But let's just take a peek and see if the science backs it up. We have an, oh, an extract blend is our first ingredient. Red algae. Oh no, this is actually good. We have squalene, some sugarcane glycerin, some sunflower. Ooh, we have coconut fruit extract, ceramide, and P E O P. Okay. I'm still not gonna be purchasing Sunday Riley for the current time being, but this actually looks really good. Like this actually looks really good. Melon fruit extract. We have different oils. Now this is impressing me. Specifically, what I'm seeing are those ceramides. Ceramides are essential to our skin function. Our stratum corneum, the outermost layer of our skin is like 50% ceramides. And sometimes if you have dry skin, it's a little bit less, which is why putting them back in there is great. But also red algae, phenomenal. Algae is not a plant nor an animal. It is amazing. It's an organism of its own and it is fantastic for skincare. We need more tests and studies. There's red algae, green algae, brown algae, etc. But dude, even even just for the antioxidant properties, it is so great. We love algae, which is different than seaweed. Fun fact. This actually looks like a bomb ass ingredients list. I love the melon. Isn't that what Cindy Crawford uses? Cindy Crawford melon extract thing? Doesn't she have an infomercial on that? This actually, it does look good. I don't know if I'll be trying this. I wonder if I can find a less expensive dupe for this. The price is also not terrible. It's 65, it could be much worse. Ice ceramide cream, I wonder if it has a cooling effect on the skin. Phoebe has introduced me to something wonderful. I am very, very happy to see this. Oh my God, I like it, I like it. And then apparently you're meant to bring it down to your neck, which I always forget to do, but gonna do it today for you guys. Bridgerton was challenging because 
your skin is being put through so much, you're not getting enough sleep and they're putting makeup on you every day. I don't usually wear a lot of foundation. So when you're being put in foundation every day and powder as well, powder is something I never usually wear in my day to day life, but obviously for, so you don't look shiny on screen, you're kind of caked in powder. So not necessarily a ton of obvious makeup, but definitely makeup that's gonna clog my pores every day. It's very intense for your skin. I And when you get a spot, because you're not able to really look after yourself, the spot stays for like three weeks. I had a, one spot for three weeks, um, which was a nightmare. It was very big. She's lucky she only had one spot for three weeks. I had spots and cystic acne for like 10 years. And I still do, oh God, I still do. But it's not nearly as bad as it used to be because I got my skincare routine under control. What she's talking about I think is really important. And a lot of people like you and me who don't work on a set of a movie don't realize is that when you're watching that movie or that TV show, you're seeing this as if it's all in the same day. Look at Titanic, right? That took how many months to film? But you're looking at it and they have to look exactly the same, which means same makeup, same way that their hair falls. You have to make that look identical. And for makeup artists who work on film sets or even more difficult special effects sets, can you imagine if someone has a pimple one day and for like a week or a half or three, and then that pimple goes away? Like you have to use makeup to either cover that or accentuate that so that it looks the same. And there's so much pressure in that that goes into the movie making industry. And also actors and actresses are usually a part of SAG, the Actors Guild, but sometimes they're not. But the rules and laws around that are very different. If you work a normal job and you're non-exempt as a W-4 employee, you probably get overtime. A lot of actors and actresses don't get overtime. And especially if you're doing like a 15 hour day, literally wearing this makeup and getting this powder put back on you and trying to pretend like you're awake and being like, <laughs> There are so many pressures that impact your body based on your work that someone who's never gone through that, you know, can sympathize with, but will have a really hard time empathizing with. And that's why when it comes to celebrity skin and some skincare routines, there are a lot of people, including me, that are like, wait, 58 steps. First off, I love you, Shay Mitchell, but how the hell do you have time for that? And then number two, sometimes celebrities need a little bit more of the treatments, the procedures, the pokies, the tweakments, just to make sure that things stay the way they should. Even talking about society's expectation of aging women or aging men or aging non-binary friends in the industry, we're supposed to be frozen in time and not age. That is a ton of pressure to be put on us, not just from consumers of this media, but literally from the movie sets. Imagine having to not age for an entire year because it takes a whole year, 10 months to film a movie. Like that's crazy. Anyways, I love that she's opening up about this. Sunday Riley's Juno Oil. I love this product so much. I mean, especially in winter again, I put it on day and night and um, you know, hope for the best. I love that she's using her skincare in the right steps. If it weren't Sunday Riley, I would prefer to see another routine, but that's my own personal bias that I'm putting on here because it's my YouTube channel and I can do and say what the f I want. Hashtag personal opinion space. Anyways, I love that she's using the oil over the moisturizer. This is how you should use oils. It locks in a moisturizer, especially for someone like her who has dry skin. Putting an oil over that moisturizer is going to lock in that hydration. And it's also gonna be really great because it gives her that glow that dry skin is normally missing. The Juno oil is not one of my favorites. I believe that Hiram loves the Juno oil. I don't know if he does anymore. I don't know the detail with that. I forgot how pretty it was. It's like a pink and red, yellow. Yeah, it's beautiful but it's also $72, the Superfood Facial Oil. There is one facial oil that I love that's comparable from Youth to the People. Hiram also loves Youth to the People. When did this become a video about Hiram? I would definitely recommend the Youth to the People over this one. This one does have cold pressed blackberry, cold pressed blueberry, cold pressed Chardonnay grapeseed oil. Fancy ass grapes for you there. We have broccoli, we have meadow foam. Again, arguably really good antioxidant filled, but if you're looking for some cold pressed ingredients that are delightful for skin. Audacite is very expensive, but they're more of a small business, another female founded brand. There's also Oz Organics or Oz Naturals. They also have some cold pressed items. And if you don't care that it's cold pressed, use to the people. Less expensive, better ingredients in my personal opinion. Really, really, really good. This antioxidant one is also great to use during the day. I feel like she doesn't necessarily need it. She could use, 
use this or the vitamin C or just like mix the vitamin C in with a moisturizer. I think that would be a good thing to do. But overall, she knows her steps. The question is, is she going to use sunscreen? I've seen so many celebrities put on all these steps and then not use a sunscreen. And I'm like, the rest of your skincare is useless. It's like getting into a car crash without wearing a seatbelt. Like if you don't have your sunscreen, why bother? Why bother? When I have time and I'm not feeling super lazy, which is most days, um, I'll do a bit of, which I learned from um, probably Vogue, <laughs> Vogue beauty secret videos. When I have an early morning, when I remember I'll put this in the fridge the night before and I'll kind of do this in the car on the way to work. And I feel like it just de-puffs. This is how you know she's fucking fancy. If she's doing this in the car, she either has a car that drives her, <laughs> Tesla, or she has like a limo taxi driver who drives her to work. Or she does this while she's driving, in which case she must be very talented. That seems like a hazard. Anyways, this is Gua Sha, and a lot of people don't actually know how Gua Sha works. These stones are great. They are beautiful and wonderful on the skin, especially like she said, if she puts them in the fridge, she knows her shit. I don't know where she got it from, possibly Vogue, but she knows what's up and I love to see this because we don't normally see this amount of skin intellectualism from the celebrity world. I love this. But with Gua Sha, a lot of people don't know how this actually works and we need to do a video on this because even I learned some things recently. Gua Sha is not just a stone, it's an actual practice, an ancient Chinese medicine practice of creating bruising and bleeding under the skin. And a lot of people are like, wait, Gua Sha is this rock. No, it's not. No, it's like an actual practice and it literally involves bruising and bleeding of the skin. Now you should not be doing that with this. This is, you know, a nice massage lymphatic drainage tool. You could use one of the rollers. You could just use your hands, but you should definitely be gentle. You're not trying to rip the muscle like off of your face. Okay. You're supposed to be gentle and it looks like she's doing it right. But is it necessary? No. Do you need to spend $200 on one of these? Please, God, no. Gua Sha takes advantage of so many people. You do not have to spend a ton of money on an exotic sounding rock. If you want to appreciate Gua Sha, learn about the culture, understand the cultural significance, appreciate it, and then use it. Or you can use one of the stones that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, and you can add that to your routine if it makes you feel nice and fancy. But you should not go in expecting this to transform your face and to get rid of all your wrinkles and to help you with all of your acne because that's not what it's going to do. It is relaxing. It's for those slow mornings where your chauffeur or your Tesla Elon Musk space car drives you to work, but I wouldn't recommend doing it if you're operating a motor vehicle. I wouldn't recommend using it in the traditional way on your face, which would literally cause bruising of the skin. Traditionally, it was meant to be used on the back, but I'm gonna have a video on all of that because everyone gets gua sha wrong. Man, in the Western world, everyone gets gua sha wrong, but she's doing a great job. I'm highly impressed. I think it was about 13. And when I started wearing SPF every day, and I really do think it's a game changer. She was 13? That is amazing. When I was a child, my mom would put me in the UPF swimsuit. She would slather us in sunscreen and I hated it so much and I didn't know the benefits. So when I was 13, I rebelled against sunscreen. I was like, hell no, you can't get sunscreen on me. Boy, if I could go back and change time, would I change some things? SPF is your BFF and I love that she's using this. It looks, oh my God, of course she is. I didn't even know sunscreen had a Sunday Riley. Sunday Riley had a sunscreen. I didn't even know. Apparently, she uses only Sunday Riley. Oh, this open to skin store and apparently Sunday Riley got like two stars out of five. Apparently this sunscreen, the lighthearted sunscreen is not very well loved. What is in this? It's an SPF 30. It's a lightweight 99.99% oil free sunscreen with, ooh, with turmeric and blue light defense. Blue light my ass. <sighs> At least this is a sunscreen. You know what? I don't hate blue light blocking in a sunscreen. That is fine. Blue light blocking antioxidant face oils can f all the way off. Just use a vitamin C, okay? Let's see what is in this. We do have, oh, this is zinc, octisalate. This is a chemical and inorganic slash mineral blend. Chemical is organic. We like to see this. I love the turmeric root in here, but nothing else really impresses me. We got dimethicone, so it's bouncy. Cool, we got turmeric. That's some leaf extracts. 
This looks like a two out of five star products. At least it's not overly expensive. $35 for a sunscreen is not bad. This is good. Now she mentioned she had dry skin. Seeing uh, that these reviews are not great and seeing is that I've never tried the product. Wait, 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 let's, let's read the customer reviews. It says two out of five stars, tiniest bottle. I couldn't believe how tiny this bottle is when it arrived. Almost like a sample size. You need to be using a lot of sunscreen for it to be effective. So this was disappointing. It goes on pretty smooth and pretty pale, so no white cast for me. It dried down a little bit chalky on my face though. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a very good product. If you are looking for sunscreens for dry skin, Black Girl Sunscreen has an amazing one. They actually have one that's very thick and moisturizing, even though it's supposed to be a mattifying one, I find it to be like Vaseline. And if she likes that Vaseline-y texture, use that one. We actually did a video where I compared half face of the two black girl sunscreens and I just never uploaded it. Again, Cassandra needs help with her production schedule. Cassandra doesn't manage herself in respect to time. Another sunscreen that would be amazing for dry skin, Super Goop also has a sunscreen oil that is fantastic and it looks like she likes that oil texture so I'd actually recommend the sunscreen oil. That would be something that she would love and if you like facial oils or if you have dry skin, that'd be perfect. And even Dr. Dre recommended the Elta MD UV Sport and you know what? That's a good one too. Those are the three that I would recommend over this Sunday Riley one. But uh, you know, her skin does look glowing and gorgeous, which I must say, I'm very happy to see. She's a skin intellectual. She's been using sunscreen since she's 13. <laughs> yeah. She's a celebrity setting a great example. I love wearing wigs on any job because- When will you wear wigs? <laughs> It kind of saves you the hassle of having to wash your hair <laughs> at all. And um, and on Bridgerton it was ideal because I didn't really want to cut <laughs> micro bangs into my hair. Uh, I think everyone was very happy when they found out that it wasn't actually my, my real hair. I don't tend to wear makeup like every day in my normal life. I'll usually just do a little bit of concealer, a brow, I'm like, obsessive about my brows, but I'm gonna do like a, I don't know, I'm going out for a fancy lunch or something. This is, a, it's a special occasion. I'm gonna start with Charlotte Tilbury, beautiful skin on. I wanna see her in a wig. I need to watch this TV. Is this even a TV show? Is it a TV show? Is it a series? Is it an online show? Is it a coffee machine that it's also an alarm clock? I don't know, but I want to watch it. What do we give this routine? If I were to take my personal bias for Sunday Riley out of this, I would give this a 9.5 to 10 out of 10. She's using products that work for her. She's doing what works for her. She has little luxury or little massage additions that she uses when they're convenient for her. She wears a sunscreen. She uses vitamin C during the day. She applies her products in the right steps. Her technique is beautiful. She washed her hands. Yes, this is probably outside of my personal thing with Sunday Riley based on how they lied and basically paid their employees to write fake Sephora reviews that swindled acne sufferers out of their money. Outside of my personal bias against that situation, this is fucking awesome. I think this is probably one of the best celebrity skincare routines I've ever seen. And you know, we got to talk about coffee machines that are also alarm clocks, which is just fucking awesome. When it comes to Sunday Riley itself, I would give Sunday Riley a two out of five stars as a brand as a whole. They do have some really good ingredients. They also have some really sh ingredients, but what they did to take advantage of acne sufferers was not okay with me. If I were to replace some of these things, there are other products that I would use. I also think that she is the type of person that might love a brand like Youth to the People. I would highly recommend Youth to the People to her. Go on Yes Style or Style Vana. They have some great stuff. Purito. Oh my God, Purito would be great. Inexpensive, affordable, very similar formulas, great active less pricey and many things that are dry skin friendly. Overall, this is like a 9.5 to a 10 out of 10. I would have liked to see a little bit more sunscreen and I would have wanted to know a little bit more about what she did to take care of her spots. Like, does she use a spot treatment or something? But this has made me so happy. I don't know who she is, but I need to go watch her coffee bar TV show. I'm going to sign up for the Hulu or the Netflix or whatever the fuck it is so that I can go watch that. Maybe we should live stream it. Should we live stream and critique as we watch? What is it even about? A bridge? I don't know. Let's find out, shall we? If you want to learn more about what 
went down with Sunday Riley and Sephora, you can watch that video right here and make sure that you subscribe so that when we do finally post those videos on Vaseline or black girl sunscreen, you actually get notified and get to watch them. Always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. Stay happily caffeinated and hydrated. And I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.